Welcome to the Trophy version 2, an updated version of one of my most popular solo bases, with an added expansion with a meta compound similar to the Sphinx, with external TC passageways, anti-siege disconnectables and flank roof jumps. Disconnectable heartbeat sensor turret pods cover the compound in case of a breach. Unique gatehouses come equipped with a mini funnel wall, as well as Patrico peaks facing both outside and inside the compound. The Trophy V2 keeps the distinct window peaks used in the first version, while also upgrading the rest of the shooting floor to have a range of improved angles similar to the Sphinx, including the 360 degree shooting floor. Flank roof jumps can be used to access the roof to retake the shooting floor or to surprise raiders. They can also be used to exit the compound quickly. Pair all of these great features with a spacious, cosy, bunkered interior, the Trophy might be the base for you. I would like to quickly thank everyone once again for the amazing support recently. If you do enjoy any of the content you see, please consider subscribing or joining the Discord community down in the description below. We start off the tour showing these low wall flank peaks from the external TC passageways. This is where our disconnectable TC is connecting to our external turret pod. This covers the external TCs from being replaced during a raid. These turret pods look back into the compound in case of a breach. They are activated using heartbeat sensors to open the door. I recommend placing the heartbeat sensors inside your compound. They can also be used to clear door campers. We enter one of the TC passageways using this double door airlock. There are three external TCs on this base. Each side comes equipped with these low wall peaks. They can be used to clear the roof above or outside the compound. These are highly effective for clearing door campers as well as surprising raiders with silence weapons. There is space for many deployables in here, such as your locker, beds, and battery. Here is the upkeep of each external TC. There are three of them on this base. This base has incredibly low upkeep for the size of it, meaning even a dedicated solo can upkeep this base easily. You will find some drop boxes above these Patrico peaks. We use multiple small planter boxes to achieve the perfect crouch height. These peaks both look inside and outside our compound. The angles you can achieve from this one position are amazing. We now enter our compound through this double door. This is also watched by turrets, one on each side. These low walls can be used in case of a compound breach, just as a simple way to peek. You can also place shotgun traps to act as a mini funnel wall, and also can be used to crouch on. On each side, just above our disconnectables, we have these low wall peaks with a campfire. This acts as a great way to kill door campers, as well as get some flanking shots. This is how you disconnect your anti-siege turret pod. By doing this you can then replace the external TCs at the edge of each of the TC passageways. You can simply connect it back like so. There are flank bedrooms here that you can use to retake the compound quickly or get back into a fight. By using these respawn points along with this ramp peak here you can exit the compound quickly. Here you will find some shop front peaks that can be used to look outside the compound in case of a breach. As previously mentioned, you can use these ramps to exit the compound quickly, or you can use it to actually surprise raiders over the compound walls. From my understanding, you cannot place twig or ladders to climb over this. You can also use this area to jump onto your roof. This can be used to great effect to clear your shooting floor, acting like a mini open core or you can simply use the roof ramps on top of the base to surprise raiders. Coming around to the other side of the compound, this is symmetrical so it is the same as the other side. On this side we can enter our base through the simple single door airlock. You can replace this wall with a vending machine or window. Here on the second floor you will find space for many deployables such as your electric furnaces, secondary loot rooms and medium battery, alongside your repair bench, research table and workbench. Before we enter down into our bunker, we will go up to the shooting floor. You don't have to use this square ladder hatch if you would prefer. We enter the second floor through this triangle ladder hatch. Here you will find some great visibility before you advance onto your shooting floor. This area is covered by three turret pods, one in each corner. We use these stair peaks to improve the original window peaks used in the trophy base. These can be used to get some vertical angles as well as longer angles. Once again, you can drop into this area using small boxes to get some flanking shots. 
On the other three corners we have these Patrico peaks to gain some longer angles, along with ramps that protect us from raid bases. This is very similar to the Sphinx, however you can replace this to the original trophy base if you prefer. I will link the original video down in the description. This compound expansion will fit perfectly with that base too, so feel free to play around. And once again, on the shooting floor, we have this 360 degree shooting floor where you can defend your base from almost entirely. This is very similar to the Sphinx. On the roof, there is space for three SAM sites as well as three windmills. Coming back down into the base, we enter our bunkered core. I recommend you place some of your main loot here, as well as the edge of the external TC passageways. Here is the upkeep of the main TC. To seal your bunker, simply place a ramp here and upgrade to metal or high quality metal. You must use upgraded wood with this bunker, as twig will clip through. You can simply hatchet this out, and then replace the foundation. To access the second floor, you can actually replace this ladder hatch with a simple twig staircase. Before we get into the build, I'd like to quickly thank our sponsor, Blue Haven. Are you tired of getting offline raided and want to test one of my base designs? Blue Haven is the server for you. A 2x trio server dedicated to anti-offlines. They are one of the best servers to test your base design on, featuring 2x gather and online raid periods. Sounds like the raid window's over. We're safe for now. If you are interested and want to find out more about Blue Haven, you can find their Discord server on the screen or down in the description below. You want to start off the build by placing these foundations to claim your build spot. You can simply place one square if you do not have the necessary resources early on. Place the TC in the right hand side. You can place it in the left if you prefer, but I place it on the right. On the back side of the base, you can place these foundations to place your half height shelves. I would recommend leaving these triangles I just deleted, if you would prefer to add these later on. You could upgrade them within the honeycomb so you can replace the shelves at any point. Before you expand you want to place this foundation here. You do not want to upgrade this anything past wood, as this is where your bunker will be. Then you can place one triangle raised foundation in front of you. You can then wall in the other sides and add half walls to prevent soft siding. We will now complete our jump up like so. You can either place a twig staircase, furnaces or a level 1 workbench to access your second floor. You might need to replace the door if it opens outwards to place these twig staircases. Now simply honeycomb the base. I would also recommend honeycombing the bunker side at this stage. You want to try and hide your bunker early on. To access your base at this point, you can place these foundations down and then you can place a ramp. If you want to place either of the square foundations, you should place the triangle foundation on the right hand side, as square ramps can prevent you from placing the foundations either side. Now we will expand the second floor. You can replace this full wall here with a window if you would prefer. At this stage I will add a frame here for our ladder hatch. If you do not have a ladder hatch at this stage you can simply upgrade to wood and then hatch it out and replace later. As previously mentioned, always place the foundations either side before you place these roof ramps. 
you can replace this with a window, as previously mentioned. Now simply place garage doors and the other single doors. I would recommend placing an armor door on the second doorway once you acquire it. Now we'll do our roof access. You don't have to put shop fronts here, you can put normal windows if you prefer, but I like to put shop fronts to increase the raid cost. However, if you're using shop fronts, you cannot place them now as you must place your staircases first. These stair ramps must be upgraded to metal in order to place the shop fronts. You can place them facing outwards like so. Then simply add an armor door that opens outwards. This is what the base should look like at this stage. Now, just to remind you that symmetry is on, so you must repeat this on all sides. Now you can simply honeycomb the base like so. Now on either side of the squares, you can place these half height walls, then window frames on top with a triangle frame in the middle. This will be the beginning of our shooting floor. Then simply seal in the top with half walls and then the triangle roof. On top of these frames you can place a square frame, this will be access to our 360 degree shooting floor. Then add windows on each side. We will now expand the external shooting floor. Now simply seal in the top using roof wraps, then honeycomb the insides and upgrade to high quality metal. I opt not to place a garage door here so the turrets have a better angle. Now you can complete the ramp peaks using stone. If you are using the original trophy build, this is the stage that you want to expand from. Now we will do our anti-siege disconnectables, as well as our flank bedrooms. You can add two half height walls and then low walls on top. Do not place frames anywhere here otherwise the disconnect will not work. You must also place two half walls here. At this stage you can simply seal it in the top like so. You can also add your roof ramps like so. I recommend placing these before you place the barricades. This is what it should look like. Now we will do our external TCs and passageways. For some reason here the three-way symmetry glitched, so ignore this stage here. Now you want to expand by five squares, then cap off with a triangle. Then come back with two half moons, then place your final square. There should be a half gap in between these foundations. You can place a frame here to check you've done the right stacking. Now build out by 5 squares. On the final square or triangle you will notice that building privilege disappears. This is the correct placement. Now you can place the final two triangles then upgrade them and build them. This is where your TC will be. I would recommend adding the bedroom area early to increase the raid cost to the external TC. This is what the base should look like. 
Once you have placed the TCs, you can then expand and place your turret pod and TC disc connectables. However, at this stage, I will just complete the TC passageway and gatehouse. Place a half wall at the back side here, then place two floors. Then you can place window frames and then lower walls behind them. I would also recommend placing a full wall here on each side. This will reduce the cost to build and upkeep. Then simply wall in the top of this bit, as well as a half wall on top. Then you can place floors for your turret pod area. Now complete the TC passageway like so. Make sure the double door opens outwards to airlock the single doors. You can expand two frames upwards for your windmills early on if you prefer. When placing the compound walls, you want to make sure that the disconnectable works and you can place this ramp here. So when placing the walls, it is vital that you check. Place them roughly like so, and then you can see if you've done it correct. Every time you place a wall, make sure that you can place this square ramp. I also recommend placing a campfire here to get the perfect crouch height. Before you place these barricades on top of this gatehouse, you must make sure to place the chain link fences within the turret pod. I will quickly realise this and then replace them again. Make sure to place a gate as well to access your turret. That is pretty much the compound complete. Now we will furnish the inside of the TC passageway. Each of these large batteries will power three turrets each, as well as a SAM site. Now we will do our anti-siege disconnectables. You could have done this at an earlier stage if you would have preferred. Simply build out by triangles, then place the final triangle for your turret pod. You can upgrade this to metal. Connect it to the main TC by using these frames here. This door will be activated using a heartbeat sensor. The heartbeat sensors should be placed within the funnel walls close to where the shotgun traps are. You want to expand on each side by 4 frames, by placing these triangle foundations. It should be about this much. You can place 4 frames, then you can upgrade the third one to metal. 
and of course repeat this on the other side. You might want to add a switch that can activate the door of the external turret pod. This can be used to clear door campers. This is what the base should look like. I will now run through some deployables and recommended upgrades. Here are some recommended upgrades.
you can place heartbeat sensors just below these shotgun traps on the floor. These can be connected to your external tyropods. And that pretty much completes the build. If you did like what you see, please consider subscribing or joining the Discord community down in the description below. Thank you for watching.